have to understand something. Warner Brothers is likely looking at potential sales projections and PS4 and PS5 market saturation compared to Xbox. That's already a factor. It's already a factor that they're likely going to sell more copies of their game on PlayStation. So Warner Brothers is looking at that. You don't think they're looking at the ecosystem shift on Xbox and thinking, huh, maybe we'll sell more copies on PlayStation because, oh, I don't know. Microsoft constantly bangs on the drum of day and date, day and date, day and date. If our game isn't on Game Pass day and date, that consumer base is less likely to buy our game because of the ecosystem that Microsoft has fostered. We're likely going to sell more copies logistically because of market saturation of the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 exceeding that of the Xbox Series 1 and the Xbox Series X, but also the ecosystems are entirely different. Let's put the purchase incentives on the PlayStation market. That's what he's saying. That's the point that he's making. He's not dogging on Game Pass or Microsoft. He's saying, look, developers are going to look at these two different ecosystems and they're going to put the purchase motivators on Sony's platform because that's the platform where people are buying games in greater numbers. He, it's, it's not a dunk. It's a prediction based on consumer behavior. How many people in this chat, this chat's a microcosm of the gaming world. How many people in this chat say, I'll wait for it to hit Game Pass? I've seen people say it. Is it on Game Pass? I'm not going to play it then. Is, is it on Game Pass? I'll wait. I'll wait for it to hit Game Pass. I'm telling you, you, you can't... I don't like what they're doing with this game. I don't. I think grabbing quests and items and restricting them to one platform, I don't like it. But I can totally see developers saying, if you're going to create extra incentives for purchase, do it on Sony's platform. They got more consoles in circulation, and their ecosystem is one where people buy games. Kyle says, I 100% already catch myself immediately asking, is this on Game Pass? Not a great mindset. Listen, developers are going to hate what I'm about to say. They're going to hate this. Do you know what I do? You know what I, want to know what I do? Every single time, developers are going to hate this reality. They are. Do you want to know what I do? Every time a new game releases, I check Game Pass first. That's a feather in Microsoft's cap. That ain't a feather in the dev's cap. That means I run to the funnel of, do I have to buy this or not? And I know that's not the best way to handle it, but I'm trying to cover games, record games. I'm trying to spend less money. I'm trying to be a frugal consumer. That, that's already having an effect on how I look at game launches. I run to Game Fast and I check it first. What do you think devs think about that? What do you think they're going to do? Well, we're going to make this mission. This is a great purchase incentive. Where should we put it? Put it on the platform where people are in a greater habit of buying the games at full price when they launch. Abe says, if Hogwarts was being on Game Pass day one or at any point, I would agree with Eugene, but I don't think that argument is valid in this situation. There's no indication they'll be on Game Pass. You're not interacting with, with what Eugene said. Eugene is not saying it's on Game Pass and therefore that's why they did this. He said they're going to the platform that has promoted itself as the premium platform where people purchase games. And this will impact the future decision of devs as well. It being on Game Pass is superfluous to his point. It's not the point that he's making. Certainly, if something's on Game Pass, it'll drive this point home even further, but it doesn't have to be on Game Pass. It's an eco... Listen, Mo was in here telling me, Hammer and Tongs, Knockdown, Drag Out, Fight, back when we were comparing PlayStation Plus and Game Pass, and you want to know, know what he told me? Over and over, I was told big first-party titles will come day and date. If not, PS Plus is dead on arrival. You can't drive home that messaging about day and date. Day and date. 
you can play it day and date on Game Pass, and it doesn't affect the user's mentality. It does affect the user's mentality, because Mo's in chat right now saying, I'm still saying it. He still thinks PS Plus is dead on arrival. Why? He is hook, line, and sinker bought into the dogma of day and date on Game Pass. What do you think that's doing to the consumer base at large in the Microsoft ecosystem? If something lands on that platform and it's not on Game Pass day and date, there is a section and a subset of that consumer base that will not buy that game. And devs are paying attention. So, you're upset that Warner Brothers put purchase incentives on the PlayStation ecosystem? You better get used to it. I think Eugene is right. I think the Hogwarts Legacy PS5 exclusive quest is just the beginning. These are the reverberations of when you create an ecosystem that is completely at odds with what people have done for the last 20 years. And developers are paying attention. Not changing what I'll say, 2024, it'll be day and date. Well, you're like 0 for 5 on predictions about what these companies will do. You were wrong about Call of Duty going exclusive. You were wrong about God of War getting delayed. I, there's, a, there's a handful of other predictions you've made that have already not come true, homie. You, you don't have a great batting average. There's no way that Jim Ryan's telling people on earnings calls that they're not going to do that with day and date, and they're going to do it within two years. You want to talk about being removed as a CEO post-haste and being sued by your shareholders. Yeah, let's just throw massive revenue funnels away. I'm not wrong about Call of Duty. Really? There's literal articles where Microsoft claims to be repudiating the market restrictive actions of Blizzard Activision acquisition by saying they have no plans to put Call of Duty exclusive and that it wouldn't be profitable for them to do it. But sure, you're not wrong about Call of Duty going exclusive. How many times do they need to say they're not going to do it? The contract they offered with the three-year extension was a was a leverage game. They have no plans to rip that game off that platform. You're not going to you're not going to deny 48% of your purchasers the ability to buy it. No, I'm not going to cover the ID at Xbox show today, no. Because of the PS5 quest in Hogwarts Legacy, I'd rather play it on PS5 because of that being yeah, you're going to feel like you're getting a more complete experience. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing, they outline the details of the Hogwarts Legacy PS5 exclusive quest, and it gets you access to a shop that will be better than all the other shops in the game. They've also said that it's a timed exclusive. 